Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Imagine making a difference. No, imagine being the difference. The difference between I can't and I can or I won't and I will. The reason someone chooses to wake up and strive for greatness. In life, it can feel like everything is working against you. Let's defy all odds and break generational curses. This is Overstepping Poverty with Daquan and Zacchaeus. Welcome back to Overstepping Poverty, the podcast that provides you with tips, tricks, and hacks in overstepping poverty. My name is Daquan Brooks. I'm here with my co-host, Zakia Shaw. How you doing? I'm doing good, my man. Just blessed to be back on another episode. Yes, sir. Excited to be doing this again. You know, it's it's a lot of work, you know, and I think that we get better each time that we get together and we work on this podcast. And you know, just the consistency of it. I'm really, I'm really proud of us. Absolutely. And that's all you can really do and ask for is that you continue to grow, you know, and that's what our podcast is about as well as just growing and growing with each other. And then of course, as we grow and we share the information that we receive as we grow, we also relate that to others, you know, and they grow with us. So, and that actually kind of gets us into what we want to discuss today. Um, you know, the climb there in our very first episode, I discussed as you continue to go up the ladder, you turn around and you pull someone up the ladder with you, you know? And so today we'd like to actually discuss the lift as you climb mentality. You know, as you continue to grow, you bring others up with you. So I want you to kind of start off and tell us more exactly about that. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Lifting as you climb for me, it's, it's easy to kind of understand because you know going through life it's easy to I guess I shouldn't say it's easy but we all need somebody right at some point in life you always you you need somebody that's gonna pull you you know when you're at your lowest lows sometimes and I I try to resemble that when I give back to people because I just try to be someone that I feel like I needed when I was growing up. You know, I've always felt like the underdog. I've always felt like I I had things stacked against me. So with that mindset, it's easy to understand, you know, it's hard out here. People need help. And when you're in a position and you're fortunate to help others and help them grow, I think that you have to capitalize on that because it doesn't just help the people that you're helping. It really helps you more. You know, it helps you grow. It gives you perspective. So the whole concept of lifting as you climb, although it can be it can be tough at times, is so important because that's just how you grow a stronger community and a stronger foundation for people to build on. What does you know, what does it mean to you when it when it comes to, you know, lifting as you climb? Absolutely. So, you know, the phrase lift as you climb, like when I'm asked that, the first thing I think of is pretty much to help others and support them as you progress and you continue to seek advancement in life, you're not only just thinking about your successes. You know, you're thinking about how exactly am I going to help others be just as successful as I am? You know, how am I going to pass the torch to the next person so that they can continue to do that? We, you know, we discuss paying it forward. The information that you receive daily, it's kind of like paying it forward when you give that information to someone else. You start to really acknowledge that, if someone else is in a, in a time of stress or struggling to succeed, you can be that person, that mentor, to, that guide to, yeah. really, to really help them move forward in life and move forward in whether it's their career or anything like that. You know, it's, it's really just acknowledging that now that you're in a high enough position, you can show others exactly how to exactly how to get there. Yeah. You know, so that's what I get from that. I mean, it's it's a, it's tons of obstacles that you have to break and you have to move around and then you show others, hey, listen, this is the journey that I took to get here. You don't have to take this exact same journey or you don't have to walk this exact same path, but I'll show you exactly where you could fall on, flat on your face or slip on ice. Yeah. This is how you move around that. Yeah. And I think that really is, it points to the importance of mentorship. It, you know, like I mentioned, and like you've mentioned, when you get to a place of a higher level as you're growing, you also need to remember where you came from. 
right? You need to remember that at one point you had to go through some obstacles that maybe you wouldn't want somebody else to go through. So you're using that wisdom from your experiences to pass that on to the next person where you could help propel them, you know, what took you 20 years to learn, they could learn in a week giving that information. So that that can really be beneficial to those around you. And I challenge people to find somebody, regardless of what spot you're at in life. Find somebody that is, you know, I don't want to say lower than you, but somebody that's in a tough spot maybe, or somebody that you think you could benefit, and try to help them, try to mentor them, or try to give them a piece of advice that maybe is going to keep them pushing, it's going to revitalize them, give them the energy to keep going. Absolutely. Just understanding that they're not the only one that's been through those types of things. Yep, someone who's seeking that guidance right you know so yeah i i like that i I really like that challenge and i think i would like to take on that challenge as well you know myself absolutely getting into our next question here how can people as they're growing within their own success you know how can they use that success to reach out and benefit other people we've talked about how it's important to go back and mentor but like how can that help somebody what can that do for somebody it's going to brighten their future you know and the way that the way i see it is is you're the light at the end of the tunnel there's so many people that are going through these dark paths where they don't know exactly where their value is in life you know they don't know exactly where they can pretty much establish themselves and so that dark tunnel and you being that light at the end of the tunnel that gives them a path to really walk and gives them a um, an opportunity, you know, and, and I'm an opportunist. I feel like everyone's an opportunist uh, where when you do get a chance to finally grow and really show your light, then that's like the perfect, that's the perfect time to really uh, spread your wings and fly, you know? So I think as how it's going to help others and how you can really truly do that is, is you can't not only just gate, gatekeep your, the information that you receive It's also, you can't gatekeep the experiences that you've had. You can't gatekeep the accomplishments that you've also, you know, endured um, on that. So it's a lot of stuff that you need to make sure that you're sharing with other people. Um, And one thing that I like to connect it to is, is Drake says it's lonely at the top. Well, here's why it's lonely at the top. It's because you didn't bring anyone with you at the top. So it feels lonely. Now, how, now, he may be relating it also to uh, the parts to get there is lonely because it is, it's a path that you have to find yourself um, and no one can really teach you how to find yourself. That's something that you mentally, physically, emotionally, you have to prepare yourself to really, really deep dive into who you are and who you want to be, you know, um, and what you're going to be in the future to really find that. But that's how I like to connect it to is just where it's lonely at the top. It doesn't ever have to be lonely. You can always pull someone up with you. Um, and I can guarantee you it'll feel like home, you know, how about you? Well, you know, I think using your success to benefit others, it got, it depends on what you, what do you think success is, right? People have to determine what success means to them. You know, for some people being successful is making sure that all the bills are paid and that there's food on the table and a roof over their family's head, you know? That's success to a lot of people. So regardless of what position you're in, kind of like we, I was just saying, if you have somebody that you know that you feel you can provide some value to and give some insight on, you know, hey, this is something that I also encountered. Here is how I got over it. I just want to give you some information so maybe you can steer clear or you can take a different direction, you know. I think for us, when we're in positions to help people, Also understanding at the same time, you know, there's people that we also can look up to and that we want, you know, as as mentors as well to help us grow. You know, we're not we've said it before. We're not a finished product. We're growing every other every day and we're learning new stuff about us. But from the position that we're at, we need to be a flashlight for people. You know, we are that light that people look for. You know, it's it's hard especially in a time like right now with everything that's going on it's dark people are nervous people are scared people don't know what's going on they're confused you know they're they're stuck on the media you know and we have to be kind of that that beacon of light for people to where they're like oh like 
there is a way out. It doesn't have to be all chaos and craziness, which is what society wants you to think it has to be, but it doesn't, you know, and I think that that leads to even more of a equal society when people are lifting those blinds from themselves and they're actually able to see things, you know, and analyze with their own thoughts. And that comes from different perspectives, being able to have people around you that are questioning your thoughts or, you know, you're able to question theirs. So, you know, with with that, how can just creating you know, that culture with the people that are around you, whether that's at work, in your inner circle, at home, you know, how can you create a culture that really values lifting people up? And it's not just for their own success. It's really for the betterment of the team. So there's a, there's a phrase that I always say, and that's to make a change, you have to be the change. So in this example here, you have to be the example. If you want people to lift as they climb, you have to show them exactly how to do that. I think we live in, like you were just discussing, we live in a society right now that is so scared of feeling like they're not smarter than someone else or that they're not as um, as powerful as someone else. They feel like they're giving away these, these aspects or what really makes them feel bigger, but that's not true. You know, it's just like in, in a, in a job, like in a position that my mom and I, we were discussing just this past week, you know, she ended up moving to another position in her job. And with her doing that, she took a couple steps down um, from that. Now, does that mean that she's not as valuable to the company? No, it is. She's just as valuable. It was just, she needed to move down. And she, what she did is she actually ended up having someone that she hired on move into her position. And this is how career fields and places of employment should always be. I mean, you should be hiring people that you feel could be just as good as you, if not better, because at some point in time, you have to pass that torch along, you know, yeah. and the way that companies usually downfall from either whether it's passed from generation to generation a lot of the information they weren't they they weren't given that 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 knowledge that those experiences it wasn't shared with them so they had to try and like pretty much just come up with it on on their own and then that's how a lot of those businesses and organizations fail you know, so I think, again, you know, I kind of went off into a little bit of a tangent there, but you do have to be the example of that. If you want other people to follow and lead, um, follow and lead, you have to lead and then they'll follow and then they'll, you know, obviously vice versa. They'll start leading as well. So I, I agree. I think it's all a part of thinking with the end in mind, you know, thinking with more than just what's next, you know, for people especially in career and in life, we, we push and we push to get to these places, right? And oftentimes when we're doing that, we think that they're ours when nothing in this world is really ours. You know, at some point, everything we have, we're going to have to let go of. So when you have that mindset that you're looking to add value to people's lives, you're looking to grow a workplace environment that allows you to wake up with excitement to go to work, to not have to dread going to work because you don't like your coworker because you think they're going to take your job. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think they're going to take your job, they probably should because you're already in a place of understanding that maybe I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Right. So I think that's important. I think what you said at the beginning of that question, really, it reminded me of Tupac. It did. It, it When he was alive, he had an interview where he said he believes that something that an interview that he does is going to spark the mind of somebody that will change the world. And that's having the perfect mindset of lifting as you climb. You're putting information out there in the world, even though we have stuff going on in our lives, right, where, you know, we're, we have stressful situations or things that we go through, but we still make it a point every week to come here and record and put out information to our followers and to our listeners, not because we have to and any of that, but because we really want to help people. And we understand that the people that are tuning in every week that are listening to us, they are actually getting something from us. And that's, that's also a big piece of it too. So, you know, I love that. And, and also with Tupac, he had the song changes and he said, if we want to, you know, change the world, we need to change the way that we're treating each other. And that's so true. 
you know, Zach, that kind of brings me into my next question. Can you share a personal experience of being lifted up by someone else? And how did that impact you? Yeah. Um, for me, it was getting when I was transitioning from leaving the school district, really. At the time, I guess I didn't really see it. But now that that time has passed, I can look back on it and really be appreciative because I was coming out of the school district, never had been in sales, never had been 100% commission. And, you know, I had applied at a lot of places. I wasn't getting the job, anything like that. So for me, you know, you can feel stuck when things aren't really going your way or the way that you think they should be going. And at the time, I remember, you know, substitute teachers were making more money than most of the support staff in the school district. So it was like I felt kind of disrespected, felt like I needed to be somewhere else. And when I was applying for jobs, I applied at New York Life and I had a few interviews and I ran into a gentleman that is the head of the Great Plains office named Alex. And, you know, he was so smooth. It was, you know, the, the way he was able to talk, the way he was able to communicate. He seemed very genuine, and that was something that I can typically pick up on pretty quickly with people. And, you know, he gave me a shot. He, he, he gave me a shot to jump into sales with New York Life and sell life insurance and stuff like that. And, you know, I there's other people that have applied, and they don't get that job. And without that moment, without him believing in me or seeing something in me, where he felt like I could be successful in that career, I wouldn't be where I am today, you know, and I'm so appreciative of that because that moment of him lifting me up, seeing something could be and is, has been completely life-changing. And, you know, that's that persistence and not giving up, but at the same time, it takes other people, right? right. We, we've said you can't get places by yourself, right? So you need people. Absolutely. It takes a community. And it's funny that you say that, you know, that you didn't know how much it impacted you at the time, but you really figured that out, like, as you continue to grow your success and, you know, yeah. as you continue to be successful in what you're doing. And it actually kind of relates to mine as well as, is when I got into my sales career, my, my used vehicle manager, who is actually the son of the owner of McKee, he, I, you know, he kind of took me under his wing. I don't think he knew he did, but he was my mentor. He really was. And I'd, each, each month, I would pretty much I'd go into his office and I'd sit down and I'd ask him. I said, hey, listen, I'm not in here for you to tell me how good I did just this past month. I'm actually in here for what you can tell me what I need to do to better myself. Because there's one thing that that gets comfortable in sales is, is comfortability. When you, when you get comfortable in sales, you start to do the bare minimum. You don't start to really see the changes that need to happen. You just, you coast, you know, and that's not the person that I am. And that's not the person I wanted to be in that job um, on there. And so every month he'd come up with different things as he watched me grow, um, what I could better myself at. And now there, there did become a time where he's like, yeah, I got nothing for you. And I'm like, come on, you can figure something out, make something up, you know, make me feel a little bit happy that I came in here and I asked for some constructive criticism, you know? And so that's yeah. just something that is very important to me in my life is that constructive criticism, because it allows you to really take a step back and know that even though you're successful, there's always room for growth. Perspective, you know, exactly. Yeah. And that, that, that's exactly what it is. It's perspective on that. So, so yeah. And that's, I mean, he, he lifted me up at that point of time and I'm climbing, I'm climbing. And I, I really do believe that I'm, I'm helping a lot of people climb as well. And I'd like to continue to do that. And that's what we're here for right now to continue to do that. Absolutely. So this actually gets us into our next part of our episode where we share five tips, tricks, and hacks in taking the next step in overstepping poverty. And then of course, showing you how you can lift as you climb. Zach, why don't you go and start off with the first one? So the first one is going to be, be empathetic. You know, put yourself in the shoes of others. Try to see the world from where they're at and try to understand maybe what they need. And ask them, but be empathetic, understand that people are going through life and people have a lot of different challenges that they're facing and just even a smile, you know, a smile to that person could change their entire day. 
Absolutely. And next is going to be be intentional, make a conscious decision, you know, to actively support and uplift others as you make progress in your own life. You have to understand that you are not the only person in this world that is going through a certain uh, issue or a certain problem. There's tons of people going through just as many problems as you're going through, and some are probably worse. So just mm-hmm. being intentional in everything that you do, and I guarantee you the growth is going to be tremendous, not only on your end, but also on other people that you're being intentional with as well. Yeah. Um, the next one is be generous. Okay. Share your time, share your information, share your resources, and really allow those things to help you build strong connections with people. Um, everything that you give, you know, like we've talked about with generosity, you're going to receive that back tenfold. So give, give, give. And be inclusive. It's pretty straightforward. You need to recognize and celebrate diversity and promote inclusivity. Uh, So seek out and embrace different perspectives and experiences. This is, again, going to be tremendous to your growth as well as others as well. Yeah. And then finally, be persistent. You know, keep lifting others up. Be that hope for people. When times are tough, the media is going crazy, the world is burning down. Be that strong person that people can look to as a sign of hope, as a sign of peace, that, you know, everything is going to be all right. And with you in their life, they they can be that for other people in their life. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to our episode, Lift As You Climb. Until next time, thank you for overstepping poverty. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overstepping Poverty. We hope you found this week's discussion informative and thought-provoking. We know that tackling poverty is a complex issue, but by working together and understanding the root causes, we can make progress towards creating a more equitable society. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to our show. Until next time, let's take the next steps in Overstepping Poverty.